about girls, for girls, to girls. AFT is a podcast that is primarily focused on young girls. Throughout the episodes of this show, our hosts will discuss the different kinds of issues that girls have to deal with and encourage them to be themselves and reach for their goals. Let's welcome our hosts, Sierra Layton and Erin Wright. Welcome into episode three of the AFT podcast. My name is Erin Rupp. And I'm Sierra Layton. Today we will be discussing body positivity. Body image is how one views their own body and how they feel and perceive themselves. If you have a negative perception of your body and how you look, it's most likely that body insecurities are involved. Stated by the National Organization for Women, 78% of young girls are unhappy with their bodies by the age of 17. Adding to this, according to Emotions Matter, 88% of young girls compare themselves to others they observe on social media. Now that we have given a clearer understanding of what body image is and the percentage of young girls who are known to struggle with it, let's begin with the discussion. Episode 3 of the AFT podcast talks about a rather serious topic, and we wanted to make sure that our listeners knew some of what will be mentioned before carrying on. During the discussion with our hosts, there will likely be some mention of eating disorders. Seeing as this could be a sensitive topic for some, we wanted to make it known. I think it's very common for girls to place values and views on themselves and their bodies because of the mostly unrealistic and ridiculous rules placed on the matter by society. It's not unusual for society to perceive women a certain way, and often those standards can have an impact on the personal views of young girls, but this can lead to a negative mindset. I think we can both be honest with each other when I say that society almost makes it impossible for girls like you and me and those listening right now to accept the way we are. Yes, I agree that society's expectations for body image are absurd and diverting. It puts an impression on all these young girls viewing posts on social media or simply listening to conversations of those around them that being too big or too small is a problem. There's a point when the concern over someone's size because of their health can be warranted, but as soon as it starts being used for insults, an issue arises. Absolutely. It's almost like in certain situations, people try to manipulate others into thinking that the shape or size of their body is entirely their fault. My issue with this is, while it's never okay to bash someone for the way that they look, you also don't know what could be going on in someone's personal life. There could be so many things that lead to someone's body struggles. You never really know. And this is exactly why being supportive is the most humane and logical thing. Let's look at the view of some women who are on the negative side of body shaming from others. Being told that you aren't good enough or that no one will ever find an interest in you because of your size definitely isn't the most confidence boosting statement to hear. The sad thing is that it's usually girls who fall into the societal section of being bigger that hear this. We even see things like this being vastly used in movies and TV shows. Then they proceed to have a character being told that they need to cut back or hit the gym. Granted, in some shows where things like this are portrayed, it's with the good intention of trying to bring attention to the issue at hand, similar to what Sierra and myself are doing on this podcast, but in some situations, people just do it because they can. There's even been moments in kids shows where jokes towards someone's size have been used with a laughing track in the back. In what way is it funny to insult a girl or anyone for that matter for their body? Simply, it isn't, and it never should be. Even girls who stray more on the thinner side can't escape the comments about their body. People make fun of them for being too skinny. One of the most common things I've heard people insensitively ask is if someone is anorexic because of their size. I've been approached with that question before, not necessarily because I'm thin, but because I don't tend to be seen eating very often. I have my own personal reasons for that, but some people aren't comfortable with answering those kinds of questions. Others panic when approached like that and can say something they'll regret later. Things like this are serious for some, and prying at someone over it isn't right. Yeah, and I think that it's a major thing that people don't tend to see or just choose to ignore. Being completely honest here, it's not uncommon in today's world for people to go after others who are struggling or seen as different, and sadly, the topic at hand is a big target for people. So I wanted to share a personal experience of mine to help others see that they're not alone and it's completely okay to speak out about things like this. It was maybe about two years ago now, and I got sick and couldn't keep food down. Even soups really didn't do anything for me, and it was definitely a miserable week and a half, but over that time of hardly eating I lost a lot of weight and it was physically obvious. I weighed maybe 130 to 135 before I got sick then I was down to 120. I'd always hated the size of my body and that started in about fifth grade so when I saw my weight go down quite a bit I was extremely excited about it completely ignoring the fact that I didn't lose weight in a healthy way. I became obsessed with keeping that image and I tried to ensure I stayed that way and there were days when I'd go without eating and not tell my parents about it or I'd eat a small snack and be done for the day. I did that because I didn't want to overeat and start gaining weight again. I'd occasionally bounce between 118 and 120 but even then I didn't think that that was good enough. The only reason I never went below that weight was because my parents made sure of it 
and they always tried to get me to eat and usually I would but one of the long-term effects from me being sick was uh, my smaller appetite. Over time I did get better because my parents would talk to me unhealthy it was for my body but even today I still look at myself in the mirror or step up on a scale and absolutely hate what I see. I think it's great to share experiences like that with those invested in AFT. It really helps the girls listening know that even we as the host have struggles with the very things that we're discussing. It gives opportunity for connection. It allows for the things that we're saying to have a bigger impact and larger meaning. Understanding that we relate to our listeners and other young girls around the world gives hope to those struggling. It gives them the sight they need to see that they aren't alone and can someday look on the broader side of everything. I'm sure people hear it all the time. Don't judge a book by its cover. You never know what's really going on in a person's life. These are things that need to be heard. As cliche as some might think they are, I won't apologize for standing by it. And neither should anyone else who fully agrees with either of those statements. If you're happy with you, then the opinion of others is irrelevant. Your perception of yourself is what's most important. We know that for some of you out there, ignoring the opinions of others is easier said than done. But the best advice we can give, ladies, is to remember that you are absolutely allowed to set your own values and beliefs for yourself. You have the right to make your own decisions and not let them be influenced by others. And remembering that it's okay to set boundaries with others, even friends, is completely okay too. It might be a bit harder to do this, but a good friend will stand by you in your decisions. Don't feel the constant need to apologize for this either. It can be gainful to practice self-awareness and self-confidence as well to better build an understanding and appreciation for yourself if you're struggling with it. It's much easier to ignore the comments of others when you start believing in your opinion and not that of others. Thank you for tuning in to the AFT podcast. Be sure to stay alert for episode four. We'll be going over social media influence and how Barbie relates to the topic we went over today. About Girls, Four Girls, Two Girls is co-hosted and co-produced by Sierra Layton and Aaron Wright. AFT is a Screaming Eagle Productions podcast. Hillcrest Arts Night is celebrating five years of creativity. Help us celebrate the big number five. Join us for Hillcrest Arts Night 2024 on Friday, April 19th at the Hillcrest High School Cafeteria from 6 to 8 p.m.